welcome very much to this uh, lunch inspiration set, um, session uh, together with Ignite and our special guest, Celine Poisset, Head of Open Innovation at uh, L'Oreal. And uh, I'm very happy to welcome you. Uh, many all of you know Ignite very well, but I'm going to give you a very brief introduction. Uh, my name is Stina Lanz and I'm the head of Ignite Sweden, which is a national Swedish program supporting startups at all stages to find uh, their markets and customers. And uh, we are organized by the Swedish incubators and science parks and work very closely together with all the 29 top incubators all around Sweden. So we have been working with a lot of different companies. Um, we started back in 2017. And as you can see, it's a wide variety of, of uh, large companies and also within the public sector searching for startups. And uh, to this date, we've been working with almost 800 startups. Uh, and uh, we are very proud to say that one of those six actually starts a collaboration with, uh, with a larger company uh, through the meetings that we arrange. So, and this is a very important task for us and, and for Sweden and for Europe. Um, if, we, if we support our startup to find their market faster, then startup specifically with uh, innovations for the environment also can make a difference faster. So, uh, what you can expect from, uh, from entering a collaboration with the startup, it's um, several different, of course, aspects in that. But one is very easy. It's of course that one startup has a, a solution, a piece of a puzzle that is matching directly into what you actually as a large company uh, is looking for. And uh, it's a fairly easy match also for us to facilitate. And the only thing that, uh, that makes it important for us to also do this kind of matching is um, that it's very difficult for both the large company and the startup to actually find each other by Google because you don't really know what to search for. Uh, but more often, we have a startup that has an existing solution and then meeting a large company with a specific need or a, a curiosity to investigate a technology then that techno technology actually can be adapted to solve a really huge challenge that the large company, uh, company has. And uh, this is something very interesting, we think, when we see these kind of matches. And that's also why I'm very, very happy to have L'Oreal with us today, because this is actually what you are experts of, transforming something uh, to something really valu valuable within your field. So I would like to say welcome very much to Celine. Hello. Yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, I would like to leave the stage uh, to you. And uh, after, after your presentation, there will be a Q&A. So we have prepared some questions. And then as an audience, you're of course also very free to ask questions um, to both Ignite, but of course, uh, Celine. Uh, and to do that, you need to use the, the chat. Okay, so please, Celine, the stage is yours. And to, to share with you uh, how we solved the open Maybe just a little bit of background about myself uh, of how I ended up uh, doing open innovation. As I started at L'Oréal 19 years ago, I have a background in polymer chemistry, and that's how I joined L'Oréal to, to join the research and to design new polymers in the labs for several years. And then about 10 years ago, um, I moved to open innovation activities that we didn't call them open innovation at that time, but open research. Uh, the focus was more uh, academic and research institutes and to set up 
collaborations and research collaborations with the research partners. Sorry, uh, Celine. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I think you need to use your headset again because the sound ah. is coming and uh, going. Okay, let me know. Yes. Is it working better like that? Try again. Can you hear me better? Yes, it's better. Please be close to the to the microphone. Is it like that? Working okay? Working better, yes. Hopefully so. Um, so I was explaining that I, I started offering innovation activities about 10 years ago at L'Oréal, more focusing on academic partners. And um, little by little, uh, we, we moved to a spin-off of universities and then uh, startups. Uh, and that's within that context that I started also uh, to explore the Swedish ecosystem, but more from an academic perspective with uh, the Karolinska Institute, the CCH, uh, uh, RISE, where we have uh, many collaborations with RISE uh, Institutes, and also Sing at that time, and uh, more recently uh, Ignite. And in the meantime, uh, we also uh, reorganized and uh, created the new open innovation for research uh, less than two years ago. And this is this activity that I'm going to share with you. And within this, uh, this group, uh, uh, which is an international team, I manage what we call the technology scouting activity. And I will explain more uh, in details later on in the presentation. So first, before entering into that, I wanted to, um, to give you uh, the basic numbers on uh, describing L'Oréal activity, L'Oréal as a group. Uh, because indeed, uh, L'Oréal was created in 1909 by Eugène Schweller, a chemist, um, to um, um, design a new hair dye, a safe hair dye. He did that in the garage, uh, and then he found a way to uh, sell it for the hairdresser. So actually today we would have called him a startup huh, because he, he combined both uh, innovation and entrepreneurship and business aspects in order to develop his activity and to, to bring it to the market as well. And since then, uh, obviously the, the group uh, developed and grew. Uh, so now it's um, close to uh, 90,000 employees worldwide, among which 4,000 are people mm -hmm. in research. And that's very important. And when we uh, conduct external activities, open innovations to be very well aware also and very well connected to all the internal labs and researchers. Um, it spread over um, 150 countries and it gathers 35 grants, which makes it interesting for us in terms of uh, transformation as those 35 grants um, across different countries, different categories of products, different distribution channels and different markets. So it's really uh, a way also to adjust when you have a new product, new innovation, the best brand for the best market that is supposed to target. Um, another aspect are all the extra financial uh, indicators that you see below, one that we are really uh, striving to keep at, at the highest level, whether it's uh, about sustainability, ethics, or, or privacy. So within the large group, there is research. Huh? I mentioned that 4,000 people doing research. And with the motto one, we need to be always um, bringing on, on the market a new, different, and better products. And for that, we rely on the, um, on the science because that, that company was created on by a scientist. So it is really a innovation and science and a sustainability driven company within our DNA for more than a century. So we have also acquired lots of data and expertise as we are a full player of cosmetics. We only work for cosmetics. We don't have any other market than cosmetics. So, and we address all the cosmetic applications. So from that also, we have developed a strong internal expertise dedicated for hair, for skin and for formulation. So I mentioned on the left, also all the biology of, uh, of skin, uh, uh, of hair, biotech, chemistry, physics, uh, physical um, chemistry, obviously, um, data science, environmental science as well. So there are quite a few experiences where people don't always expect 
uh, that there's such a, a diversity of expertise within L'Oréal Research that that's actually key uh, to develop those um, new innovative products. To go along with that, huh, there's also the, the evaluation capabilities that are spread worldwide, and we are open to external collaborations. It's not new, but it's something that we want to reinforce more and more, given the evolution of the innovation ecosystem. So I mentioned so that we are open to, to collaboration. So there are three open innovations within L'Oréal. Um, there's one that is part of the digital entity, another one that is connected to the operations entity, and one, the newly created one, less than two years ago, that is part of the uh, research and innovation entity. This is where I'm at, and that's what I will be talking about. Obviously, you know, the, the three open innovation teams are, we are very closely connected and we interact with one another because we explore innovation ecosystems and sometimes they may be the same, sometimes with a slight different focus, uh, but we may be meeting the, the same people and so we, we connect very strongly. And within uh, research and innovation, there are several activities of open innovation. So I mentioned earlier the uh, what we call the advanced research labs that are collaborating with academic partners. So that still continue to be done uh, and managed by the labs of advanced research. We have uh, a team that is really dedicated to collaborations with suppliers of core materials that is called the DIMT. And the open innovation team that uh, I belong to is really gathering two different kinds of partners, uh, one for the vendors to the open dev and for my activity really dedicated to address the startups and more specifically the deep tech startups. So this is really something that we wanted to create in order to make sure that we cover the full spectrum of partners uh, that could bring innovative uh, technologies and solutions for the real. So this is the team huh, that, that was created uh, on a kickoff uh, less than two years ago, you see there in December 2019. And what is new also for us that this team is for the full research scope and is gathering three roles that you see here, the techno intelligence that is um, uh, managing and um, identifying technologies and partners through different means and data science mostly. Uh, so so we really detect finally the, the partners that we could interact with. The technology scouting team, this is the one that I manage with a specific focus in Europe. And our role is really to be on the ground, to meet the people, to meet the incubators, meet the startups, meet the accelerators in order to understand the technologies, uh, the innovations, what they do. So we, we all have a scientific background. That's the, what we're trying to enter more into the, the details to understand what the technology could bring and how it could fit or not huh, with some of our challenges. So this is what we are doing on the ground. And the third road, the business development that is also interacting on the ground with all the same partners, but more with a business focus perspective uh, to understand what they are trying to achieve from a business point of view, the business models, and find a way to interact and to build a partner in a, in a fair and balanced manner. And also connecting with our internal brands in order to go uh, for the transformation of the innovation. So here in the same team, we have gathered from the very early beginning of the process of innovation with the tech intelligence, then uh, managing the collaboration from a technical point of view, and then um, transforming the, the, the partnership from a business point of view, so that the three roles are gathered in one single team for all research, which is something new for us now, to have this continuity. So for today, uh, what I was proposing to share during this uh, Ignite uh, session was first, what do kind of uh, deep tech territories are we exploring? Uh, what does it mean for us, uh, open innovation in research, huh, to be exploring deep tech startups? Uh, how do we restart? Because it, this is so broad that we could get lost. So how do we 
find uh, the topic that we want to explore. Then how do we do concretely? Huh? And this is where the, the input of uh, Ignite and also uh, some other actors like right were key uh, for us to explore ecosystems uh, such as the one of Sweden in order to really uh, have a more focused uh, approach to uh, navigate into those ecosystems. And then when we interact with startups, what can we bring? What could be valuable for the startups um, when they, they collaborate with L'Oréal? And also, finally, to give you some current examples of uh, challenges that we just uh, launched this week on a platform uh, that are open for proposition. So first, OK, what kind of uh, territories are we exploring? Um, our mission uh, is really to uh, transform the best of science into concepts, and those concepts into beauty and well-being. When we say that, OK, how do we do? So first, we have obviously our internal um, uh, domain or application domains, as we call them, and are dedicated on applications of cosmetics, like uh, anti-aging, photo protection, hair care, uh, uh, makeup. But they have very specific um, challenges. And from that, some of these challenges really require an open innovation uh, strategy. So this is those challenges that we have gathered and that we have prioritized so that then we know in a more focused manner what we need to find and for which applications we should in priority explore and find new technology. So that's one thing. The other thing by doing open innovation, it gives us as well the opportunity to explore new scientific area, also to anticipate what will be the need in the future and to look at technology that maybe as of today, it's not quite clear what uh, challenge they will fulfill, but they may be key in the near future. And that's also something that we want to explore. And in a much shorter um, time frame, there's also some business opportunities um, that we can catch uh, to um, solutions that are much more mature, maybe um, at the level of already maybe a product or formulation that can be also meaningful to finalize that development in a very fast manner. I mentioned and below one uh, sustainable innovation and green sciences that are obviously part of what we're doing. Uh, we have clear targets uh, set for 2030 uh, regarding all the innovations that will be on the market by then. For us, being in open innovation, it means that all the technologies that we will start working on as of today uh, will have to be compliant with some criteria that we have defined according to the green sciences uh, criteria in order to make sure that we will be compliant later on with our target in 2030. So this is something that is uh, quite um, clear and uh, where we're quite um, uh, adamant about those details. All of that, of course, for one purpose, um, both for our partner and for L'Oréal, and to have a business impact and to make sure that we are answering some of the needs of the market. So how do we do? Uh, because we have those uh, cosmetic challenges that we have prioritized from our different uh, application domains, but then we need to go and look for uh, technologies. And most of the time, those technologies, they are not designed for uh, cosmetic applications. They are either technologies uh, by themselves alone, not, not yet applied, or uh, they have been designed for another field of application. And so we need to do the translation uh, of first our need into uh, more generic functionalities, uh, like adhesion, uh, color protection, shape control that allow us with this such kind of functionality that we to make connections with uh, technologies from other fields of application because those functionalities, they, they can be transversal across domains. And by doing that, and by also understanding when we are uh, facing and screening new technologies, what functionality they are addressing, this is how we can make connections and see, okay, this one maybe could be a, a piece of solution, a, a brick, huh? a techno brick for one challenge 
because it will bring a super adhesion or super control of the adhesion on and off or, uh, or very uh, gentle way to, um, to coat a hair or a surface or in a controlled manner. Okay, this can be applied on certain uh, challenge. And that's the way we, we operate in order to do the translation of uh, technologies that are not initially designed for cosmetics to the, the cosmetic challenge that we want to do. Meaning that we are screening uh, really uh, in very different um, source of uh, application, very uh, uh, broad variety of industries, uh, technology. Sometimes people are surprised when we reach out to them uh, as L'Oréal, as they have not thought that what they are working on uh, could actually bring some features that could be meaningful in another environment like cosmetics. So this is also for us very valuable huh? because it means that sometimes when it works like that, that we can also uh, bring a new opportunity, a new market huh, for a partner, for a startup, if that's something that they are able and willing to, to explore further. So here are a few examples. Huh? I mentioned the, the industries on the left. Technologies are quite broad as well. And uh, more and more, all the methodologies uh, that are involving uh, circularity of materials or biomimicry are ones that we want to favor in order once again uh, to, to achieve the target that we have set for 2030. So now we know the kind of territories uh, and scientific territories that we want to, to explore. We know that there are some actors in all the innovation ecosystems. Uh, so for instance, in Europe, in each country, uh, we, we can find a, a very dense innovation ecosystem. And we could see with the latest uh, Global Innovation Index uh, that the, the first countries uh, worldwide were uh, um, Switzerland, Sweden, and that the other European countries were quite highly ranked. So where do we start and how do we explore each of these ecosystems? Because we don't want to get lost. And so, as I said, now we are an international and a fully integrated team. Maybe I forgot to say that, that we, we are covering the three zones of the US, Europe, and Asia. So each of them, we are exploring locally, more specifically, uh, our innovation ecosystem. I'm in charge of of the European area. So we have analyzed our ecosystems to understand what we can find and where. But then we need to find a good partner to guide us huh, into those ecosystems. And typically, this is an exercise that we conducted for the first time about a year ago uh, for Sweden with Rise and uh, Ignite huh, in order to explore all the Swedish ecosystems with a focus on deep tech startups. I mentioned earlier that we were quite familiar with Sweden ecosystem in general, but maybe more from an academic point of view. But for startup and deep tech startup, this is something that we needed really um, guideline and, um, uh, and coaching in order to know who we should reach to, uh, who would have potential uh, technology or scope of exploration of technology that could fit what we are looking for. And so we did that. Obviously, uh, uh, a year ago, we did it digitally and uh, over uh, a few days, uh, or covering one week, and also um, gathering uh, lots of people from uh, L'Oréal uh, because that was possible in that case to really open it very broadly. So we have a, a short movie, uh, maybe my if you want to show it too, that is explaining what we did with the different countries. I will stop sharing my screen, my face, so that we can show the movie. So the Sweden Innovation Week was the first e-learning expedition that we organized uh, uh, in Open Innovation with the support of RISE and IGNITE to discover the Swedish innovation ecosystem. 
The purpose was to have an in-depth vision of this ecosystem, how it operates, how it can match with some of L'Oréal targets and strategies, and who are the relevant actors that we should meet. Uh, beauty is moving in uh, the tech direction. It is really uh, going uh, fast in this direction. So that's why we are really open to uh, interact with uh, what we call the, the deep tech and mainly deep tech startups. And uh, that's why we are uh, really eager to uh, evaluate what startup uh, could propose. Ignite is a national non-profit organization co-owned by Swedish incubators and science parks. Our mission is to support Swedish startups with access to the right potential customers, not only Swedish large companies, but also international. Therefore, it's been fantastic to be able to work together with L'Oreal and give our Swedish startups the opportunity of actually meeting this giant. We know by experience that the more people engaged in the first meeting with the startups, the higher probability is that the startup and the large company will actually start a collaboration after the meeting. So for us, that was also a huge part of the success. We have set a new standard. This is definitely the new way of working. Even post pandemic, we will absolutely do this over and over again. I think it's a brilliant way for our startups to get access to these kind of large companies that could actually mean the future for them. Uh, there are at least two different benefits for doing this tour virtually on the, online. The opportunity to meet many different locations during the same week, which would never have been possible in real life. And secondly, exposing these meetings to relevant uh, parties at the customer. Uh, and uh, seeing the, the number of participants uh, from uh, the L'Oreal side has been truly rewarding. So yes, uh, since then, uh, um, we have replicated uh, such kind of uh, exercise of uh, innovation week of digital learning expedition in, in different uh, ecosystems because it, it, it was the first time uh, with uh, Sweden and uh, it turned out to be uh, quite efficient on our side uh, in order to have really a broad view and a good understanding as well of this ecosystem. That's what we, we expect uh, to, to understand what are the, the key domains of innovation uh, and start also connecting to the, the actors and the structures of the ecosystem so that later on we can build uh, partnerships and relations it's not a one shot, it's something that also we want to sustain over time. And of course, we could meet some startups with, with some of them. We are uh, interacting very closely uh, today. So, once we meet startups, what can we propose and offer for them? Because we really have the ambition to uh, have that the startup has a positive journey with L'Oréal, whatever the outcome. We're all very aware that uh, between the numbers, uh, the number of startups or contacts that uh, will be taken and the numbers that will actually turn into something on the market, there will be an attrition rate. But even though um, um, we will have that, we want to make sure that whatever the outcome of the collaboration of the startup with L'Oréal, they go through a positive journey, meaning that they get something out of it that is positive. And it's not only about money, it can be anything else. So that's why it's still for us very humbly uh, an ambition. We're still working on it, but with the, the mission of really addressing uh, deep tech startups, we also want to make sure that we can offer them and bring them different um, um, things uh, that could be a, a value for their development even after the collaboration with L'Oréal. Mentoring can be one part of it huh, to, to provide a feedback and a, a look maybe a different on their development independently of the, the, the value it could have for L'Oréal. 
obviously the more common one, the one that we are trying to push is really to go into the, the partnership to have, you know, the, the proof of concept and then later on a, a, a scale up and, and a development uh, together. Uh, this can be done also in different means. Huh? Um, we're opening also the um, access to L'Oréal Labs for the startups. Uh, we did that several times. The startups came to our lab to conduct the, the evaluation with the L'Oréal team all together. It's very beneficial for everyone because uh, first, uh, for the, the people at L'Oréal, they understand better how to um, handle and um, uh, and manage the, the, the technology. And also for the startups, they'll understand better the, the, the context and the, the constraints that we have in terms of evaluation, the questions that we have. And so by being there all together in the lab, working on it, it makes things much easier uh, for both sides. So whenever it's possible, uh, uh, we, we want to do that. Um, also, another thing that we want to, to provide uh, for the startups uh, whenever it's possible, it's having access to the expertise uh, of L'Oréal. I mentioned earlier that there's quite a broad diversity of expertise, and sometimes they may need expertise on, a, on another topic than the one that is strictly the, the address to a proof of concept, for instance. And uh, so we may connect them to uh, our colleagues uh, that may have an additional expertise that. Uh, may be key for them on, um, on one aspect of their development. Also, we um, always in mind to uh, um, support the development and facilitate the development of startups in cosmetics. We have implemented master class, and I will go more in details later on, uh, that are open for startups uh, in order to have a better um, knowledge about the, the science behind the cosmetics. And finally, uh, um, I mentioned earlier that uh, by the number of brands and the diversity of the markets and the channel of distributions and products, um, when we interact with the startup, it's also a way to open them to new markets and new uh, distributions, uh, ways uh, through the diversity of uh, products from the So this I think that we are implementing and really keeping in mind every time it's possible to add that uh, on top of, for the collaboration of the startup to really help them grow whatever the outcome of the collaboration of the health, that they gain something positive out of the collaboration with us. I was mentioning that we uh, implemented a masterclass this year. Um, so there were two rounds of masterclass and the third one will come up. There should be one before the end of the year, and I uh, will um, let uh, Stina uh, know uh, when the date is set so that she can also share it with the community of Ignite. It's free, yeah, yeah. it's open, but there's a limited number of, uh, of seats per session. So that's why uh, for the startups that we collaborate with, which they have, uh, of course, uh, uh, privileged access, but then uh, the rest of the seats are open for anyone who wants to attend. And the purpose is really to for one day uh, to give you a more uh, in-depth vision of the science that lies behind the research of L'Oréal, that could be knowledge of biology of the skin, of the hair, uh, regulation, uh, context or safety assessment, uh, how do we conduct uh, eva um, evaluation. So all different kinds of topics, and these are the researchers of L'Oréal uh, that will come live uh, and uh, explaining their topics. Um, and all along the day, so that you can interact with them as well. And the next session, I think, will be more focusing on what we call in science, so to also clarify that. So uh, we will let you know, but that's another way also to interact and to, to help the, the startups to, to grow on this aspect. And so finally, um, with all that in place, huh, we have also, um, decided to go uh, openly and to uh, use an open call uh, platform in order to post our challenges so that uh, startups and uh, small innovative companies can uh, apply and propose their solutions, even though they may not be designed initially for, for cosmetics. So we have a, a platform with Algorai that I will show you. Take it to the 
platform that was just launched this week. That's a platform that you will see here huh? at your eyes. Huh? I can send the, the link later on if you want to go on it. That explains a little bit who we are, how we operate. And here you will see, so the first three challenges are on hair. Um, uh, how to restore or repair the hair, how to protect the hair, and how to bring shine to the hair. We have decided to um, define those challenges from a consumer function point of view, not to request um, uh, and to define the, exactly the solution because we want to be surprised. What we expect is to say, ah, well, we would not have thought of that when we see the application. That's what we expect from those challenge. So I can show you how it works. Uh, so here, okay, you have the timing. So it's a, there's a, a few weeks to apply. And then we're explaining very briefly yeah, that there's a, for anyone who has been working in, a, in cosmetic, there's nothing new there. It's just to clarify exactly what we are looking for. Uh, a few tips to, to teach the technology uh, and uh, what is key actually is always to explain the uniqueness and the specificity of the technology and then it helps us to see how to transpose it into uh, a cosmetic application once we have understood clearly what makes it different and um, also a, a minimum level of uh, maturity uh, here are rather four uh, or, or more, huh? but that at least there's some kind of tangible uh, prototype or material that can be uh, built. And then you can learn a little bit more also about open innovation and that work for other areas. So, so this has been set just this week. It was brand new, so I'm very happy to share it with you, and I really encourage you to go there. And in the future, uh, we, we will keep posting. We have another list of challenges that have been prepared, uh, more dedicated for skin and makeup that will be posted uh, by the end of the year or early next year. So you will see more, and they will remain there always on this uh, on this platform so that people can uh, go back to them. And I think with that, uh, that was my last part. So I want to thank you all for your attention. And I hope you will be Yes, with us, you know, but any questions. Thank you so much, Celine. Uh, it's a, I am reading all the questions and I'm thinking that you have answered almost every one of, the, of them already. So very, very informative uh, presentation and very interesting. I'm curious because I know from, from the other side, I've been, we've been working together for, for some years, and I know that you also have a lot of very concrete examples. And I, I know, uh, since I've been knowing you for a while now, that uh, it's really worth the effort for a startup to, to uh, seek a collaboration with you. Uh, could you share some concrete examples of? Uh... Yes, we have a few um, examples of startups that we can disclose uh, because now they're public. Huh? Um, one of them that is very uh, uh, close to me, uh, that because I was uh, really involved with this one uh, since the very beginning, is a collaboration that we had with a Swiss startup uh, named Siosa that has uh, developed um, a way to uh, a shower head to deliver um, water with a very low flow uh, without compromise on the quality of the experience and even enhancing the experience. Uh, for the consumer and delivering also um, products at the same time. So it's a very innovative one and we've been working uh, with them for a few years. Now it's in private space and we expect to launch that uh, later on. But uh, that one has been um, quite also a, a good case study for us to learn how to uh, go through all the steps with the startup, especially one that was a little bit outside of our core uh, business, mm -hmm. and how to integrate that and to, to develop it. So um, that's a one that is a still ongoing, but a, a, a very good one and very um, good one to learn lots of things about the, the quality of the interaction with the startup. Um, 
Great. Uh, I also remember uh, one of the first times that I met you that um, that we were discussing a little bit about why startups in particular, and uh, we were talking, of course, about uh, that they have a very new technology that you might not have, and they haven't investigated the technology for your business. But we were also talking about cultural uh, cultural parts of, of working with a startup, and, and we were talking about the speed. How is this for you to, to embrace the culture part of also collaborating with a startup? Yeah, definitely. And that was also one of the reasons of um, to implement the Open Innovation Team recently. And we need to address the startups uh, in a dedicated manner, um, meaning that there are some specificities huh, that I think are obvious for all the people in attendance here, you know, the size, the, the time to take decision, the process that are different between a corporate and startup. So you have to also manage that in an in a appropriate manner. So that, that's something that we see and common for all the corporate startup uh, integration. But what I found that was really um, maybe the, 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 the point that will make the difference between a good idea and the something on the market are the people. Uh, really, the people making it work every day, because when we start interacting at a certain stage with the startups, it's, uh, it's a daily, uh, at least every two day uh, contact. So it's not something that uh, you do and then you wait for three months. It's really a, a commitment on both sides and lots of uh, time and energy. And because on the, on the journey, uh, we know that the journey will be, it's an adventure. So mm -hmm. nothing will happen as expected so that's part of the fun but sometimes there are some moments that are not so funny and so that's why it's key to have a good team and the team is people from the startup and from the from l'oréal huh? mm -hmm. and we have to make sure that we're all on the same boat and for that to have good good contact good relation and uh, and to build this relation to build this trust it will make the difference in, in the in the moment of challenge that we need to overcome and we know that once we overcome one, we know there's going to be another one later on. So we need to make sure that we're still on board. And that's part of the journey. Um, hence the, the high satisfaction when, uh, when you come to the, to, to the finish line. Huh? But the, the, the people will make the difference. Because even if we put all the good process, all the good methodology, you have to be able to build this, um, this connection between the team. Because on a daily basis, it is uh, the people that make it work or not work. Uh, even if the entity are, are okay, the, the cultural aspect of the people it is key. So that that's why for us, because it's still the time, there's lots of engagement in terms from a time perspective as well. We need also to select very, um, uh, we're quite selective with the one that we want to commit further, because we know that we cannot do it in a qualitative manner with a uh, 10 startup per, per people in the team. Huh? I didn't mention, but for the European Technology Trading Team, we are five altogether. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we, we need to make sure that uh, we work on the good topic with the good team, the good technologies, because once we're committed, it takes a lot of time and energy, mm -hmm. and we want to devote that time. So we want to be able to do so uh, and not to do it. Uh, to, uh, to rarely. So that, that's for me the, the big, big difference uh, by collaborating with startups versus collaborations with other kind of partners like academy mm -hmm. or industry as well. Great. And then that's also a very great, uh, great answer. And also it answers to the difference between the normal vendors or other types of collaborations uh, and, and the startups. And um, so I'm curious now, why Sweden? Why, why Sweden on your page or, or your map? I mean, yeah. we are quite a small country. We're only 10 million people. That, that is true. And that, that's what I was the, the, the first surprise um, when I saw the, the high level of innovation coming out of Sweden, uh, because we're uh, an international uh, team, uh, open innovation. So we have people in every ecosystem in the world. And for Europe, when we did the uh, analysis huh, of the innovation ecosystem, uh, a few countries came out. Innovation, whatever the topics, whether we were looking at it from a 
intake, from materials, from life science, freedom was always there. There was no yeah. Uh, so that means that the, the innovation level is quite high. Uh, we knew also from our past experience of uh, interaction with uh, uh, Swedish partners in the uh, universities that uh, there was a good culture fit, which is also key. Huh? Uh, so that uh, this is something that was good. And there's also um, a very high entrepreneurship mindset in Sweden uh, that can be explained by the number of startups, the uh, Karina because that is quite high. And also, it's a small country, as you said, so it's a small market, meaning that from the very beginning, you, you think big, you, you think internationally. And it fits well also with what we are looking for. So that's why. We started with Sweden. Also, we had the good contact huh, because we've been building um, our connections uh, with um, Rise and Ignite for the past 10 years. So that's mm -hmm. also was much more easier for us huh, to, to start doing things that were a bit new and different. Huh. I felt much more confident to do it, uh, to start doing it uh, uh, in Sweden with you. And uh, it turned out to be really, uh, really valuable because by doing this learning expedition in Sweden uh, last year, it helped us to identify really um, partners that would fit our strategy. So to switch from a more opportunistic approach to a much more focused approach in order for us also to um, increase uh, the, the transformation rate of the collaborations that we implement. So both for the partners and for L'Oréal, this is something key. But for that, we need to know what to look for, we need to know where to look for, and to find the, the, the good partners. So that, that's why the, all this learning expedition prepared with you, because they, it's one week, but before we did that, for, we prepared it for quite a long time, but it was very qualitative. And uh, it turned out that uh, really so Sweden on startups and on academic, huh? we knew from academic uh, research it was good, but now we know that for startups, we can also find Lots of great innovation there. Great. Uh, and uh, I'm, of course, very happy that you say so, representing Sweden here. Uh, and uh, I think one of the keys are also in Sweden that the researchers often own their own results from the universities. And therefore, it's quite easy for us to support them in building startups around that patterns or those patterns and, and the innovations. And, I think that's also a key to why you find so much deep tech in Sweden uh, compared maybe to other countries and other ecosystems. Absolutely. So, and of course, yeah. And, yeah. and also the collaboration with RISE, our research institute here has been, it's also very important that it's easy for startups to access uh, all of those kind of expertise as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I have actually uh, two questions from, from the audience. And um, one question is, uh, uh, from Hans Jörg. Uh, actually, I, Hans Jörg is from Procter Gamble, and uh, he asks, uh, he says, thank you very much for the presentation, of course. Uh, but how do you ensure uh, that the strategies and activities of the Open Innovation Team are finding a home in the, you know, in the right category internally? And I know for sure that this is not, I mean, this is a common, very common challenge that as you have something that you look up on in Open Innovation and then when you should transfer that to the portfolio, that's where the Absolutely. Uh, that's the struggle, right? That, that's the, the one of the tipping points uh, that we have mm -hmm. to be really, really cautious about. Um, because uh, as I guess you, you know, in large companies, there are many topics and especially many topics that are worked internally. So uh, I said we were started about two years ago, but it took us at least a year really to identify uh, the, the topics that as open innovation we need mm -hmm. to work on uh, by actually interacting very closely uh, with all the, the internal teams and the labs and understanding what are the challenges and which one benefit from open innovation is the highest priority so that then when we come up with solutions we know mm -hmm. that they are expecting actually us to find solutions so they, they will be um, more uh, eager and, and prone to continue and to really to onboard them from the very beginning uh, to continue to develop the, the, the technologies and the innovation. So, mm -hmm. not, so that it's not our project. This is their project. Uh, we bring them 
them and then we, we stay there always. Huh? We see ourselves uh, in open innovation uh, for the startup as the compass, if you want, within the organizations. But we're always there uh, in order, whatever the stage of the development of the technology, even if it goes from uh, one research team to maybe a product development and, and maybe scaling up, we're always there from the very beginning so that they always have one person that they know from the day one that they can refer to as a startup. And for our internal partners, we start to onboard them as early as possible. And so by defining the topic with them, that's the way of them. And I also think that was very clear in your movie, uh, because as you could see, probably everyone that, that watched it also, there was a lot of people attending. It was not the only four of you yes. or five in your team. You had uh, yes. sometimes more than 50. Yes. In and colleagues. that was also something, and people do remember it. Maybe also because it was the first time, but that's also something that uh, we made it like an internal event. Um, mm -hmm. and it's really promoted to all our internal stakeholders that they could attend, or at least be aware that now Sweden is on their radar, that they are not surprised huh, that the innovation will come from Sweden, that they can expect some. And, um, and also they could attend and listen. So from the beginning, tell us, okay, this one, I see that maybe something Sweden too. So they could start, you know, um, appropriate themselves with the, the different techniques Mm -hmm. So, which is something that obviously, if we were on the ground, uh, we would have done other things, but we could not have got all our physical ways, physical mm -hmm. ways that So, that's um, one positive aspect also of doing that in a digital manner at this stage. Great, uh, thank you. I also have a question from Nils at uh, Stream Analyze that's also in the ASEAN audience, and it's a startup that we know very well an edge AI startup. And the question is, of course, then, uh, if you have that kind of technology and uh, is that something that also is interesting to L'Oreal? And uh, yes. what way should a, that kind of startup take to, that, to reach out? Yes, uh, um, um, we are very much focusing on deep tech and not so much on, a, on, a, on AI, but there are some uh, colleagues uh, working on AI and that uh, have some uh, collaborations and development. So that's not something that we have in our daily mission, but we definitely uh, connect with them whenever there is a, an innovation. We won't be able to directly see the value because we don't have actually um, the expertise in the team. Mm -hmm. So we will rely entirely on our um, internal colleagues. So if there is some technology, they can connect with me and that we can mm. very study on that. Yes. But once again, what is key for us every time and the question is what is unique? What makes your technology different versus mm. what is existing, what the state of the art is um, mm. of your technology, uh, what different points of view or angle have you taken that will make a, a difference? And uh, because once we understand them, then it's easier to, to provide the feedback. Great answer. And uh, maybe we can also try to do a joint effort for next year to engage colleagues in the more uh, digital space too uh, in Ignite. Uh, another question that I think you already have answered uh, is uh, how do you decide if, if you would like to enter a collaboration uh, with a startup or not? This, um, if how you engage actually your your uh, other stakeholders within Ignite and or sorry within L'Oreal and and uh, my. My impression is that you do that very, very early on. Uh, you all, we are always a multidisciplinary team when you take the decisions to actually start this. Absolutely, the team um, of open innovation is gathering both uh, scientific people with different scientific backgrounds. So that's mostly the, the technology talent team mm -hmm. that I manage. These are scientific people, but also uh, gathering business uh, people with business expertise. Uh, so that's more globally. Uh, and then, um, so we conduct um, the two um, view uh, from a scientific and from a business perspective to decide whether or not we want to engage further and, and, and start a collaboration. And then it can take different forms. The most common one, we need to, especially when we detect transfer, is to understand 
what does the technology do? What does it do? What can it bring? With the way it was designed, huh? without any cosmetic uh, features, uh, what does it do in order really to see those functionalities that I was mentioning before? So this is not really a feasibility uh, um, a it's more feasibility study. Okay, I need to get my hands on it to understand how it operates, and this is where, especially at this stage, it's super important that the startup team, when, whenever it's possible, that they come to our lab because they know better and they know best huh? how what that technology does and how to, to use it. So basically, that, that's what we need. And then if once we see, then we will go for a more cosmetic proof of concept and, um, and start to see if we can uh, twist the technology to make it fit into our constraints. Uh, what would be the gap? Huh? Uh, how big is the gap to, to make it fit uh, this cosmetic application? So that's one way to go. And then it, there's, of course, a few iterations because they, um, that's the you need adjustment. And then until you go for pilot phase and then uh, scale up and deployment. It also depends on the vision of a startup, how they want to, uh, if they want to be a supplier, if they want to license their technology, um, if they're expecting also um, investment, we have our um, um, corporate venture capital called Fold uh, that can also take minority shares in startups. Um, and then sometimes we also are crossing the path of technology that we see more, you know, like for anticipation uh, and that um, maybe not so major at the moment, or maybe the transposition for a cosmetic would require first a broader exploration, so more like an incubation type uh, of collaboration. So that's also something that we are starting to implement. We have colleagues uh, working on an implementation of a, an incubator uh, dedicated to green sciences. And that would require uh, you know, for those technology, maybe a further exploration, we need to define actually what would be later on the, the port. So that's also another way to interact with uh, this stuff. Great answers. Uh, we are running out of time. We only have one minute left. There's still some questions in the chat. I will send them over to you, Celine, okay. and maybe we can have them answered uh, in a LinkedIn post instead. And uh, I was just thinking about the agorize and there's a deadline. Yes. And I think that's really important. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me that. So we just posted that, uh, the three challenges, and uh, they will be open for six weeks. Uh, so roughly um, until the end of November. And then we will review them for a couple of weeks and, and refer to the, to the startups that uh, whether or not we think that their, their technology can be a, a solution or a piece of solution. But, uh, you have about six weeks if you want to go uh, on it. And I, I think if there are some questions, maybe to clarify, I mean, feel free also to reach out to me and we, we can explain if I think they are not clear on the platform. We also eager to have feedback. Yeah, I really hope that we will have a lot of Swedish, of course, startups uh, entering the challenge and, uh, of course, goes all the way. So uh, we will for sure send out a lot of information about this also. Thank you so much for a great lunch session. Thank you everyone for yes. being and for the question. Super. And uh, to yeah. receiving uh, either questions or propositions on the, on the platform. We're looking forward to that. Have a fantastic weekend, Celine. And thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you.